All right, let's go to Simone. Let's go ahead and hop on the call. Let's go to Simone in San Diego. What's up, Simone? Hey, Dr. John. How are you? Partying, dude. What are you doing? Uh, not much. I haven't had coffee yet, so your enthusiasm is helping me. Listen, I appreciate it. <laughs> I, I, had, I had breakfast with my buddy who's a physician. And even he, after a while, was like, you got to stop, man. <laughs> like, I had a lot, a lot. So, yeah, I'm pretty wired up. Good. Pretty wired up. What's I think up? it's awesome. So um, I'm, I'm really thankful that you're taking my call. I, I love your show, and I feel like you have a way of simplifying things that feel complicated to people who are in the issue. And so I'm, I'm ready to be dazzled by your insight, <laughs> <laughs> I hope. I Listen, it's simplified because – I'm not that smart. And so it has to like, do you remember that, that on the office when that guy was trying to explain what a, um, what a prophet was. And he was like, could you just write this in a crayon for me? Like I was a fifth grader. That's me. Okay. So yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll well, get, I got well, my, I, that's I, the kind of help I need. So I got my I crayons out. Right All right, let's do it. <laughs> okay, great. So my question just to start it off, is pretty much how do I best honor my husband and son as I continue to endure like an estrangement that's happening with my parents they're pretty much not interacting with me, my husband, or my two-year-old little boy. What happened? And so I, yeah, I can give you the background on that. So essentially what happened is there was an incident where my mom was like pretty passive aggressive with my husband. Stop um, it. She, you, yeah, it happened. That has never I, happened I before personally. in the history of mother-in-laws. Yeah. I know. Wow. So I, I kid you not, it started with my husband was on the treadmill and he didn't come and greet my parents, even though they didn't say when they were coming. So it started out there with like somebody being missed about him not coming to greet them because he was on the treadmill getting a workout. So believe it or not, that was the genesis of all this drama that's of more than two years duration. So basically, at some point later, a couple weeks later, my husband just calls my, mo my mom out on it. And during that two week time period, she had basically been coming to me with a lot of complaints about my husband. He's not doing this. He's not doing that. And it sort of got to a point where I just said, you know what? I'm not having this. You're not going to talk sh crap about my husband in his own house. Right. And I need you to just have this conversation directly with him. And I'm just tired of hearing about it. So she goes in, has a conversation with him. He tells her, I didn't appreciate what you did. And she just basically said it didn't mean anything. And he's like, well, I don't really believe that. I don't believe that it meant nothing. I'm just telling you, I don't want to be disciplined the way you're going to discipline your own children. And if you have a problem with me, I need you to just come out and say it directly. So essentially, my mom took that to mean that he was calling her a liar. And <laughs> it has literally been almost two going on two years since we've all been in the same room and talked. Since then, we sent Christmas cards. I invited them to my son's birthday. My dad didn't come. And then my mom came, but she didn't talk to my husband at all. So he just was the bigger man, just went up, shook her hand, said, hi, how are you doing? Stuff like that. But even then, she said to some of my sister-in-law and my mother-in-law that I was being a bad daughter because I hadn't come and, you know, healed the breach and stuff. And at this point, Dr. John, I'm just not really sure. I'm not doing a whole lot to fix the situation. But I feel like there's a lot of things that are pretty unexcusable about this. Mm -hmm. Some of it is, you know, my husband is of African descent. He's literally from Africa. So there's he, his first language is French, not English. So we're looking at racial, cultural, language. We're looking at a lot of ways where somebody could have just stepped back and said, listen, I'm coming from a different place, different culture, different language. Maybe I'm just construing this wrong. Let me settle down and just get my perspective on this and let me just go talk to the man. But it's literally been, my dad doesn't talk to me anymore. My dad doesn't talk to my husband. They don't come and see my son. And it's been like this for two years. And I'm just like, what is my responsibility as a daughter who has always considered herself to be dutiful? But I just feel like my, I have to honor my husband and my son first. Oh man. It's hard. Yeah. I, like where do you start I, I, well, with I was, this? Like I, here, it's not here's sensible. the deal. <laughs> I I I, ugh, I don't like, and I do it occasionally on the show, and I always kick myself as I'm walking out of the studio. I hate doing it. I don't like talking about people when they're not here. Okay. Yeah. And as you were talking, I was asking myself, and I was about to ask you, this thing that happened with the treadmill. 
that wasn't what started all of this. There was no, something that you had done as daughter to blow up their pretty little picture of what their life was going to look like. And then at the very end, you said, and I married a black guy who speaks French, who whatever, 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 I'm in. Right. Tell me I'm wrong there. Um, I don't think you're wrong. But to be honest with you, the reality of this has really hit me since this whole thing went down. Okay. Like, you know, we had a beautiful big wedding. We, you know, I didn't get, and maybe this is just me being dense, but I didn't get it. Like, I didn't get the disapproval. Nobody had a direct conversation with me that said, I don't think this is right for you, or these are my considerations. It but was always just like, in, in retrospect, do you. you feel it though? Do you see it? Like, oh gosh, I missed it. In retrospect, I feel, yeah, I feel like, you know, there were some reservations or yeah. concerns or whatever, but I'm just like, at this point in time, the whole thing is just really disrespectful. And I told my mom when this whole thing kicked off, I said, you know, I just want you to talk to my husband and just handle whatever it is that you guys feel you have a conflict Yeah, but listen, about, listen, listen, you're an adult. Bothering you, just talk to him. You're acting like an me. adult and she's not. Your dad's not either. They're acting like children. Right. And this is a hard, simple reality. Your parents made their choice. Yeah. And the choice you have to make is not how do you fix this because you can't. You're the kid. You're the kid. Right. The choice that you have to make here is how long am I going to continue to torture myself and my family trying to prop up this fantasy that I wanted of what this thing was going to look like and face reality that my parents are acting like children. They have absolutely no interest in healing this relationship. They have they have an interest in winning. That's why they're waiting for you to come crawling back. Oh, well, that's how it feels. It, it's not and how I it feels. It's like, how it crazy? is. <laughs> Your feelings are correct. Yes. And yeah. And then you start to feel nuts. Like my mom seriously is not going to. Yep. Yep. But it's like, it's her firstborn grandbaby, you know? There you and go. Acting so, like a rational adult so again. Dope. There you go. <laughs> You and you and your common sense, Simone. There you right. It like you gotta stop running an algorithm trying to figure this out because this math doesn't work. So am I doing the right thing then? I'm basically just keeping it classy. I'm not really I'm not gonna start up a dialogue of conversation because to me what has to happen is a direct conversation with my husband first as a respect thing, because basically treating him like he doesn't exist mm -hmm. is not an option. Right. So I'm just staying back. I'm like, I'm waiting for you to do what I asked. And I'm just going to, I'm waiting patiently over here. I'm not, you know, but in the meantime, it's like your whole life starts to get affected by stuff like this. If it, there's family events, if there's only, only, know, only when you allow it. Right. And I say that with all due respect. It does get it does get affected and you do feel guilty and you do feel bad. And then your brothers and sisters start to look at you and be like, dude, just call mom. Just whatever. And just solve all this. Right. And yeah, I've had, had that conversation. Of course you have. <laughs> and so all, there becomes this pressure, this whatever it anytime you put up a boundary, you know people are gonna challenge it. And here's what yeah. sucks for someone like you, just I could just by listening to you. You put up a boundary like at work or in relationships or what you put it up and then you're ready for someone to come try to bang their head against it. You're ready. Yeah. What yeah, you I'm don't ready. have a plan for is when someone walks up and sees a boundary and just turns their nose up and walks the other way. Yeah. Because you don't get that fight that you were gearing up for. <laughs> and you don't that have like, true. you don't have a, 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 like a way to dispose of that energy when no one, when they're like, I'm not fighting. I'm coming over here. You hurt my feelings. And well, you're like, no, we got to fight. And you're, they're like, I think, I think you nailed it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm an army veteran. I, <laughs> I, I deployed to two different theaters. I was in Iraq. I was in Afghanistan. And I just, I'm like, number one, if you have a conflict, like we're not going to have fist the cuffs, but let's, let's, Solve Lash this problem like, so we can no move reason. on. Yes. And yeah. here, here's the deal. And then also, life's too short. That's, like, I've watched yes. people who are way too young. I, I made it. I'm in one piece. I came back from all that chaos. Yes. And I'm like, life is too short. It's too precious to be spending yes. all this time and energy trying to be right or trying to make somebody else feel like they're crappy because they said what they said. It's just, it's so not the way I would handle it. And I feel like I'm being stuck into this, like, you know, you know, general hospital melodrama. And that's no, not my you personality. Keep, you keep walking in the front door. Right. Stop. <laughs> okay.
Go to Dawson's Creek, dude. That's a way better soap opera. It's awesome. <laughs> I don't want to wait. Like, yeah, go to that one, dude. <laughs> don't go to General Hospital. Like, just don't go in there anymore. And I, yeah. and again, I know what I'm saying is hard. Like, I yeah. know this has a ripple effect on Christmases and Thanksgivings and gifts and 529 plans. And I get all of that. Yeah. Your parents have chosen to act like children. Here's no, your parents have chosen this. They don't like your husband. Yeah. They don't like your husband in their life. And you brought him into their life. And so if they can find any reason for him to not be in their life, they will execute that plan. Period. Wow. And you, he's just like such a good dude, Dr. John. Like, of course he is. He was so honoring of them. Of course he is. You know, in every respect. Like, I know. Such you, a good about, husband and father. You like, keep so good. You keep <laughs> trying to make this about rational sense. It's not. It's not. It's right. not. You can never. You will never find the thing he did. Hmm. Do you know how many in-laws across the country would just weep with joy if they were to walk home to their daughter's house and their husband was on a treadmill? <laughs> they would be yeah. like. It would be it would be cause for celebration. Confetti would fall from the sky. He's, he's, he cares about his fitness. Like this is good. <laughs> so you you can't um, you can't rationalize an irrational act. Yeah. And walking away from your grandson and your daughter and your son-in-law, who clearly loves his daughter, over yeah. a greeting issue that, as you mentioned, has racial, language, cultural boundaries. Right. Uh, barriers, if you will. And not comp- immediately seeking to go first and be like, oh, man, he probably doesn't know. Or, or let me I need to just get over myself because fill in the blank, whatever. They chose to act like kids and I'm taking my ball and I'm going home. Mm-hmm. And they, I hate that for you. 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 You don't deserve that. You've you, <laughs> because you laid it on the line. They get to have that attitude problem. I hate that for you. The thing you and your husband have to do is to start asking that scary question, which is what are we going to do next? Like, what's our life going to look like? And I love, um, that's the old Bible verse, man. The the greatest way you can get somebody is to like kindness (laughs) heaps burning coals on their head. Right. I'm, I'll keep inviting you. And if they come to your house and start a fight or start whatever, I'm just going to kindly ask you to go because I'm just not going to have that here. I've seen enough conflict for my time. I'm going to choose to have joy as whenever I possibly can. All right. And I hate that for you. But hear me say this. Yeah. You're not, you didn't do a thing wrong. Not one thing. And uh, can, he, I say, can I say that I'm like, I'm, in, I'm embarrassed. Yep. Like, I think the biggest emotion that I feel like, I, 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 I think shame is a hard word. I don't, I don't know that I own it enough because it's not me who did it. But I do feel very embarrassed. Like, as a as a member of the family, I feel like it reflects on me. And also, you know, the way, the way America is today, you know, there's so many issues with race and so many Mm -hmm. issues with injustice. And I just feel like if we're supposed to be representative of the change that we're trying to see, we're an interracial couple, we're supposed to be, you know, trying, trying to make things better. And then here I have this in my own family, this kind of toxic energy. And I'm not saying it's race motivated, but I'm just saying, how can you, how can you divorce that from the conversation? I, I, like, I, I, I don't, like I wouldn't, I don't know why you would try. Family I, members. I, I don't know why you would try, but that's you going back to the fantasy. <clears throat> right. That you took this hard step. Think back to your military service. You guys took a hard step in the middle of a mess and people tried to kill you for it. Right. And then back here, you fell in love. You you um, didn't follow the little plan that mommy had laid out for you. You fell in love. You found a great, remarkable guy. Y'all got married. You have a kid. Y'all are making a life together. And the chaos ensues. Mm-hmm. And so it's 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 again. It's I, I get your embarrassment. One thousand percent. I get your embarrassment. I mean, no ifs, ands, or buts. Um, but you can't own that. You can't own that. And I want to make one thing, um, one note. I'm always about go first when it comes to apologizing, when it goes to asking for forgiveness. Go first. Go first. The only time I'm not in favor of that is when it will be weaponized and used against you. 
And, and that's in an abusive situation, that's in a gaslighting or narcissistic, narcissistic situation, or in a situation like this when you're dealing with adults who are actually children in adult costumes. You going and apologizing and saying, I'm sorry, it will invite an even bigger wave of this nonsense coming over you and your family, and you and your husband and your child don't deserve that. So... I think you continue to be kind. You continue to say, hey, uh, you're welcome to come to the birthday party. I hope you're here. And they get, to con- they get to continue to choose their ego and their nonsensical, stupid pride over their daughter and their son-in-law and their little baby. And I can't imagine when they're 92 years old laying on their deathbed that they're going to think, God, I'm glad we won that argument and missed 14 years of our grandson's life. We showed them. Congratulations, everybody. Golf clap. You won. It's ridiculous. Someone, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 